Hello everyone, MasterZ on 101 here, and in this video I want to discuss a topological solution that I've been experimenting with lately with a particular test part. So I just want to share that experience with you. So with this cube, we'll press X and delete it. I'll press Shift A and we'll add a cylinder and I'll press Shift D to duplicate S, Z to scale it down and then S and Shift Z to scale on everything except the Z. And from here, we're just going to select the main shape in the center and shift D bring it out and press S Z and then shift Z in order to scale on everything except the Z giving us this and we'll just bring it up every time I solve this I solve it a little bit different every time and so let's just take this piece and this piece press Q and under booleans let's union them we can press 1 to go back to our main collection we could select these two pieces press Q union press 1 to get rid of anything that's not needed and let's press alt ve to shade our viewport a little better and I'm going to take this moment to jump over to circle and because we're already using 32 round cylinders I'm going to use a 32 round circle and we're just going to cut a circle here press shift T to taper we're also going to add a circle here using snap dots and at the bottom we can also add some circles maybe even taper this circle just so everything's not uh, completely the same. And so from here, I'm gonna press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh, and everything's been applied and it's real now. So we could even Alt-click Manage and it will just delete all the cutters unassociated with this particular operation. And we could just press Alt-X, and instead of Symmetry, I'm gonna press D, and we're gonna change it over to Bisected Modifier. And I'm gonna Shift-click on the X I wanna keep, and then I'm going to click on the Y that I want to keep, which will basically delete every other side of this mesh except for this one side, which is what we'll be working with today. And so let's talk about subdivision. If we were to basically press Control 1 to add a subdivision modifier, the mesh is going to turn into something rather unsatisfactory. In fact, um, we could also try adding a bevel to this and then pressing 3 to add what I call a subdivision bevel. And then let's also try putting a subdivision on top. And we see this a little bit better. So let's take it up another level. Let's add a triangulate modifier. But we also want to triangulate it after the bevel, of course. I was about to place it before, but we don't want to make the bevel work any harder. So from here, let's try pressing Control-1. And we see that we're able to subdivide the shape. In fact, our job is already done and the video is over. We've now done a subdivision conversion of this shape where now it'll handle subdivision except if we look at some of these areas they are solved just absolutely terrible and it's because we're using modifiers to solve them so let's actually get in and solve this manually as a human can solve it so I'm going to shift D duplicate this object I was going to use smart apply duplicate but I do not want to apply any of this let's remove subdivision let's remove triangulate let's remove bevel and I'm going to press Control S or actually, instead of using Control S, let's use Power Save, and I'm just going to call this Quadrify Part, and we'll just click Power Save and save this because saving is essential for this. And I'm also going to take it in local mode so we don't have to look at the other part anymore. And from here, we can truly begin talking about what we have here. So. This is where we are in edit mode. If we toggle off the mirror, this is what we truly have to deal with in edit mode. So one of my favorite tools in hard ops is the ability to basically select an edge and shift click mark to go into select tool. If you're, not, if you're in merge, you can always press S to jump back over to select, but pressing B will allow you to basically create a spacer bevel is what I call it which will allow us to kind of push this geometry out and protect its perimeters. Basically, as long as we protect the perimeters, we'll get the desired result. But if we do not protect the perimeters, it's up to the surrounding geometry as to whether we'll get the desired result. So let's shift click mark again, and we'll press B here as well. And while we're looking at this, let's go ahead and solve this. So I'm gonna solve it with knife, and I'll press C in order to constrain it, and then press E to end it when I no longer need to use knife and start a new cut and we're just cutting in some quads and so right now we're just kind of eyeballing our quad situation but we do have tools in hard ops to optimize 
visually seeing your quads and n-gons and triangles. And if we go under operations under the Q menu and we choose polygon debug, we can activate it. We could also activate it at the very top of hops tool via this icon, just pressing alt W to switch from hard ops to box cutter. You can just activate it there. So continuing on, we're gonna select this edge to this edge, shift click mark, press B. And let's just delete this face outright where I can alt click this, alt click that, right click, bridge edge loops and our job is done there. Let's select this area all the way to this area by clicking on this first, holding control and clicking this, save the file, shift click mark, and let's press B in order to space this area out, basically protecting it. So now we are getting to the interesting part. The cylinder is always my favorite part to get to. So let's do this. So I'm just gonna select both of these two pieces and because I have select boundary loops map to shift tilde. I can just press shift tilde and from here just shift click mark and we can press B to space this area out just enough and then delete this. We could just select both of these, maybe go in edge mode, right click, bridge edge loops and that part is done. We'll select this face, shift click mark, we can press B in order to push this again using bevel inside of select tool. And we're just going to delete the face and, and, and pressing control F, we're just going to activate grid fill. So last time I was messing with grid fill, it literally crashed. So using this sparingly, I'm, I'm pondering in my head. I'm like, did it crash because I used it? And then it crashed on me later, like an Indian curse or, you know, I, I'll never know what the situation was with it, but I got to work safer. So selecting these two pieces, shift tilde. Shift clicking mark, we'll press B to space it. Giving us room for us to just delete these faces. Select both of these, bridge edge loops, select this loop. Press control B, we'll drag this area up. We can select both of these, press J in order to end it. Same with these two, press J to just map these into quads, ending this and giving us a flow happening around this particular area. So I'm gonna press control R and add a loop cut, SZ zero and add another loop cut and we'll do the same thing down here with control R S Z zero to flatten it out. And so now let's talk about solving this area. I'm going to select these two points, press J, 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 just because they're very easy to figure out. And that means we can place a loop here, which allows us to protect the perimeter on this side and this side. Same thing here, starting a trend that we can continue on with the rest of our topologics. So we'll select both of these, press J, select both of these, press J. We see that this one's nice and even. This one is a little fatty, so we could ignore it, but I'm just going to solve that. And we'll just add three edge loops, and we'll add three edge loops, and we're just gonna have to make do with the amount of edge loops that we added. So I'm just selecting edges, or uh, selecting two points and pressing J to turn them into quads. And we're gonna to try to work our way around to the other side. I found that every time I dealt with this, I would have to use a reductive sort of topological solution. Like you're seeing me use here with diamond quads in order to just make my way out the other side ever so smoothly. And from here, we can just close this piece up and we see that we need just one more edge loop. We're not gonna talk about that, but we now have solved this area and we see that everything is very white. So it's looking quite nice. If we press Q and sharpen, we see that we've now isolated this area using sharp markings. In fact, if we look at our control tilde settings for sharp options, whenever we run edge sharpen, we also mark seam. And the reason that we mark seam is that I can just select this whole piece, delete it, right? but if I'm in face mode, I can select this whole boundary that's isolated with the same with L and then press control shift tab to set my snap to to be vertex. And by pressing shift D Z and then holding control to snap just to this vertex, we've now added this entire area and duplicated from the top. So we'll press, um, you know, shift N to flip the normals because they're oriented in the wrong direction. But also we could press one to jump over to vertex, right click and choose under merge vertices, merge by distance. So after merging all of that, that area is actually pretty complete. And so we can do the same thing that we did with the rest of it with this area by just shift clicking mark, 
giving it a bevel spacer. And instead of solving this one by one across with J, it's really easier to just select both pieces, right click and choose two bridge edge loops, even though I think my right click menu is getting a little, little big, but you know, sometimes so many options will blind me, but it's fine. So after selecting this loop at the bottom, we're gonna shift click mark, and we're also gonna space this area out, maybe give it a generous size bevel. And let's just solve this topologically. We would use grid fill if this was a complete circle, but it's not. And we could use grid fill with a complete circle and then cut it to fit, but that's actually too much work. And so now that we've cut this, we could just press enter and we see that we are so close to done, you guys. So selecting this bottom face and no crashes this time. And after selecting this face, we can just press Q, shift click mark, press B to bevel, press space bar. And from here, just select this last face, delete it. We're just gonna select everything. And we don't want to fill that way because it gave us a whole bunch of yellow, you know, kind of peed in that face. But if we use grid fill, we get a whole bunch of white, meaning it's all right. So from here, we see that our sharp markings are also a little weird, right? We're marking the boundary of this face. It's not actually needed. So we could recalculate by control shift clicking sharpen, which will run resharp, meaning that it will remove the old sharp markings and recalculate them based on the current geometry. But really in object mode, we could press Q and remove polygon debug by clicking it again. And the moment of truth, let's now press control one, two and three to go through our levels of subdivision. But for this, we actually want to select everything and press control E and go to edge crease. And I like to press minus one to just remove any edge creasing. And really we need to remove any markings that we have on this because we're dealing with subdivision now. We can still use markings, but it's not needed. This is not a topological defect. That is shadow being a weirdo. So if we press Alt V, we could toggle off wireframe, even though it's so beautiful and look at our final result. So basically we've accomplished this result in about 12 minutes, just getting in there and just quickly topologically resolving this geometry. In fact, we see that there's some areas that could have been solved a little better. For example, this area just doesn't even feel like it's connected. So let's actually select everything go in vertice mode, right click and choose merge by distance, ensuring that everything is connected because this should be telling us that we need a loop there in order to have a nice amount of curvature happening. So with that, I can wrap up this video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. There's also a B side where I was a little bit angry about, also this topology is not the best. Um, we're gonna need to add a loop to basically subjugate this area properly. We could also put a loop here just to be equal. And then I'm gonna roll two loops here just to just be even and OCD with this. And now we can actually close out this video talking about a topological victory over this relatively simple shape. So I hope users give it a try, but I want to do a video for adding to the docs, just talking about topological solving in the current versions of hard ops and box cutter.